Today I want to show you how you can automatically back up OBS Studio every single day. We're going to use a free program called Syncback Free to set scheduled automatic backups of everything that is OBS related. If you're here for the good stuff without any fluff, you can fast forward to the timestamp that you see here and jump right to the tutorial part of the video. Uh, I'm going to take a couple minutes just to explain uh, the different options for backups and their importance. Listen. I already know what you're going to say. Oh, backups. I don't know, man. I don't know if I have anything worth backing up, man. My OBS is super simple, man. Setting it back up would be just so easy, man. I don't have time, man. You little dingus shits will let a bot parade around in your chat for hours and hours on end, reminding you to drink water every five minutes, and you can't spare just a couple more to coordinate some backups? It's embarrassing! Listen, take your free time, get some free backup software, pair it with some free cloud storage, and back up your free broadcasting software. On a serious note, think ahead, think down the road. You have an amazing charity stream planned. You have a lot of sponsors that are involved with plenty of incentives. Months of planning has gone into uh, you know, getting this event where it should be, and then boom. Power outage, power cuts during the middle of a Windows update. Windows 10 boot partition is completely effed, and now you have to reinstall everything from scratch in 24 hours. You don't want to be that guy, uh, especially if you're taking this hobby seriously, um, like career-ish seriously. There's no excuse. So let me take you on a journey. You are going to need a few things to get this done, depending on which route that you want to go. Do you want to back up to a USB drive, like a flash drive or an external hard drive, or would you rather back up to the cloud instead? It's good news. I'm going to show you both. You're going to need a computer that doesn't go to sleep at night, a USB drive or an external hard drive of some sort, or cloud storage solution like Google Drive, OneDrive, Dropbox, and the SyncBack free software. I'm just gonna say something number five so I can put my pinky up because that was very uncomfortable. First, this is going to back up your scene and source lists, your settings, your configurations, your hotkeys, so on and so forth. It backs up all of the things that tell OBS how to act and where to find your key files like audio and video and other sources. Backing up this directory that we're going to back up does not save your pictures, your videos, your audio, your GIFs, or you know all the other pieces of media uh, that you might have built within scenes. So you need to figure out another way to back those up. And this software could be used for that as well, but um, if you're dealing with a lot of media that is bulkier in size, um, you're gonna need a much bigger hard drive or a larger cloud storage subscription in order to make that happen. So second, you've seen my OBS, how massive it is, how many scenes and sources I have, it's, it's massive. So with all of that, the size of my OBS Studio configuration folder is only about eight gigs. So most modern day flash drives um, can probably hold on to that no problem. And even a free, you know, even a couple free cloud solutions would be able to handle that as well. You know, we're thinking about the 10 to 15 gig range just to give you a little bit of headroom. So at the time of this video, Google Drive gives you about 15 gigabytes for free. And if you up that to $2 a month, you get 100 gigs worth of storage. And then two terabytes is $10 a month. Microsoft OneDrive, which is actually just baked into the operating system already, so there's no install necessary, is about $6.99 for one terabyte of storage. And if you happen to be an iOS user or an iPadOS user, and you're already paying for iCloud storage, storage, uh, you can download iCloud Drive uh, and install that onto Windows 10 Home. Quick pause. If you are an iOS user and you are not backing up your phone to iCloud, please send me a message. I can help you. Dropbox Plus is $12 a month, and that is for two terabytes of storage, uh, and that's if you pay monthly. Um, but if you pay annually, it's a little bit cheaper. Um, if you would rather go the local storage route, a 64 gig flash drive costs about 10 to $15, and an external hard drive size at about one terabyte, that's gonna be about 50 bucks. Um, but that's okay, because you already have an external hard drive, because you're already backing up your entire computer already. <laughs> Ha ha ha!
Addendum, I would not recommend going and buying a flash drive for backing up data. They're they're fickle, they're slow, they break easy. Um, I would only recommend going this route if you are already in, if you're already, if you are already in possession of a flash drive. Another great option would be um, a NAS, a network storage device, um, or you know maybe another computer on your home network that you could sync files to. Those are a little bit more advanced use cases, so we won't really go into that right now. Here is your step-by-step. -step. Head on over to Google and search for Sync Back Free, free backup software for Windows. The URL is twobrightsparks.com, but if you Google it, you'll just get right to it. Download SyncBack free and install it while leaving all of the options default. A profile is a single instance of a backup containing the info of what you want to back up, where you want to back it up to, and when that actually happens. Um, you have a crap ton of options to go through um, where you can get really granular with it if you want. We're going to keep this really simple by only messing with three options. So we're going to take the data that is within the OBS folder and then copy and paste it to a secondary location on a daily basis. That is it. Just a quick heads up, the folder that we want to back up is actually hidden in a directory called app data. Uh, we first need to tell Windows 10 to make this folder visible to us so that we can do what we need to do. So the first thing you want to do is hit the start button in the bottom left hand corner and start typing show hidden. And if it doesn't pop up, you might have to close the start menu and then reopen it again because Windows 10 sucks. Um, you'll see an option called show hidden files. So give that a click. Scroll down below the file explorer section and to the right of change settings to show hidden files and system files, there is a show settings button. Another window will pop up at you and the sixth option from the top is titled hidden files and folders. Check the circle for show hidden files, folders and drives and then click OK. When you're done with this tutorial, you're more than welcome to go back and hide these folders again. Because I tend to tinker in these folders often, uh, I just tend to leave it on. Now with that enabled, it's time to navigate to the OBS Studio folder where all of the scenes and profiles are stored. Open up File Explorer. Uh, you can do that quickly with Windows key E, and then you can click on this PC. Open up your primary operating system hard drive that is labeled as C, then Users, your username, app data, roaming, then OBS Studio. And you're gonna to wanna to be backing up all of the contents that are in this folder. Head on back to Sync Back Free, and in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, click on New Profile. Give your backup profile a name, like OBS Studio Backup. Then you wanna click on Next, and on this next screen, you're gonna to wanna to choose Mirror. This ensures that everything that changes in folder A, which is your OBS folder, um, all the changes replicate to folder B, which is your backup folder. Mirror is pretty much the best for this type of application. Um, so you can just click on next again, and then you, you can leave all of these settings default and click done. So now that we have our profile created, there are only three settings that we are after right now. We want to tell sync back free what folder we want to back up, where we want the files to get backed up to, and what time we want these scheduled backups to happen. So this has to be done when OBS is closed because if OBS is open, then it is accessing those files that we're trying to back up and your backup application won't touch any files that are currently in use. So remember that file explorer window that we had open where we navigated to the OBS studio folder? So you can actually head back over to that folder now. Click in the file path text box and you will see that it's highlighted the complete path for the files that you're looking at. And that's actually what we're interested in. With that whole path highlighted, you're gonna right click and copy, and then you're gonna head back over to sync back free and click on the area under source, and then you can right click and paste. Next, we wanna choose where the files are going to get backed up to. So click the little yellow folder off to the right under destination. And we have a couple different options at this point. If you are going with a cloud backup solution and you have the application downloaded and installed on your machine, you should have a folder somewhere that you can access, that you can drop files into and they'll automatically get pumped up to the cloud. If you just installed this recently, you should have an application icon shortcut on your desktop. Um, you can pick 
any one of the solutions, Google Drive, OneDrive, iCloud Drive, they're all gonna work just fine. And we're gonna want to open up that folder and create a new folder called Backups. And then within that folder, you can just create another folder called OBS Studio. That file path would be like Google Drive, Backups, OBS Studio. And that's gonna be our destination. The same process applies if you're going to be using some sort of USB storage device. Once you've decided, Choose that location and click OK. So last but not least, on the left panel, click on When. Here we are going to set the scheduled task for when these backups should take place and how often. Now, for me, my computers never get shut down ever. There are too many applications and backups that run overnight on almost every single machine so they're never off so that I can get backups properly. Maybe you're one of those, I only leave my computer on during the weekend type of psychopaths. And that's fine. Um, you just need to adjust your schedule as needed. But for the sake of demonstration, we are going to go with a single backup that happens every single night. Once you're on that screen, you can click on edit schedule and it is going to prompt you for the password that you use to log into your PC every day. If you don't have a password, you should have a password. This won't work if you don't have a password. You know what else won't work? Any of your future personal or sexual relationships if you don't log in with a fucking password. For those of you that are dope, and maybe you use a pin to log in instead of typing in a password, um, this isn't what it's asking for here. It still needs to be your letter-based password that you used before you started using the pin. Under the daily tab, set the date for the first scheduled run, the time, and how often this should reoccur. The clock is in military time, so adjust accordingly. Now, if your stepmom is just as much of a psycho as you are and watches the power bill like a hawk, you do have some options. So if you click on settings, scroll down underneath the miscellaneous settings, there is an option to shut down your PC once the backup completes. No more late nights with angry stepmom. So when you hit OK, you're going to be met with a warning screen that says your profile is configured to delete files from the destination that are not on source. All this means is whatever you change in folder A will also be changed on folder B. So both, you know, adding and deleting files. And this is fine because if you make a change in folder A, you want the changes to be reflected in your backup every single night so that you always have the most recent files. You're gonna get one more pop-up asking if you wanna perform a simulated run. This pretty much performs a test backup but doesn't move any files. It will report any warnings or any errors. So yes, we wanna do that. Next, a window pops up that you can ignore. Just click on continue simulation. Now, since OBS files are pretty small, this shouldn't take more than a minute. And once that is completed, you will see that your profile has had a completed simulation. If you happen to have any errors, you can right click on the backup profile and click logs. And this will give you a backup report with all the details, uh, including any details of any specific errors that you might have. And this actually helps if you have maybe a friend who's a little bit more technical than you are, you can send them the report and they can kind of help you out with it. Um, but this is such a simple backup. And if OBS is closed when you run this, you shouldn't have any issues. Hello, this is Editing Knackers from the future. I, I forgot to touch on one kind of crucial thing. So we just ran a simulation run within Syncback Free. It was uh, a simulation, nothing actually copied. So what I want to do is show you what it looks like when you run an actual backup job. So I have my OBS Studio folder on the C drive here, and then I have my backups folder, which is currently in iCloud Drive. So all you need to do is right click on the profile, the backup profile, and hit run unattended, you'll see that it will load. And then all of my files suddenly appeared over to the right. And then in the future, just to make sure that these backups are running correctly, you wanna look at the last run or the last successful run. And of course, if the result of the last backup was success, this last successful run will be the most up-to-date. And if it's not, make sure that you can always right-click and refresh, and that will give you the updated numbers. All right, back to video knackers. And that's all there is to it. This is my final recommendation for you. On your phone, you can use an app where you can set reoccurring reminders. Set 
a bi-weekly reminder to check on these backups to make sure they're running correctly. If you want to make sure that you're looking at the most up-to-date data, just right-click anywhere in this white space and click refresh. Look at the last successful run for the last time that it ran, and then under result, you can see if it completed successfully or not. Once every two weeks, you can just look, make sure it's good, and then move on with your life. You will thank yourself in the future from yourself down the road. The cool thing about all of this is you can create as many different backups as you want. So maybe there are other streaming apps that you have files that you want to keep safe. Maybe your stream labels folder, maybe your Streamlabs chatbot configuration. There is so many different things that you can do and it's super, super easy. You just have to replicate the same process. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. You are always welcome to shoot me an email at contact at knackers.com. And lastly, if you need any kind of technical support, we have a tech support channel in Discord that's called hashtag help in my Discord, where you are always welcome to ask any questions. We have so many qualified people that are able to help you out, and they're always around if you need it. So remember to be kind out there to each other, and have a great day. Hello, I've just found you. You seem so serious. I can appreciate that. What is the focus of your channel? I seem serious? I've been talking about penises for like 40 minutes.